Okay, we welcome in the new manager for the Royals, Mike Matheny. Thank you so much for joining us. My first question for you, what do you think of the locker room set? You've been on anything it. like this? I love it. It doesn't even smell like a locker room. That's <laughs> even better. We were just speaking off air about the fact that before you came here, you were hanging out with Andy Reid and the Chiefs. What exactly yeah. were you guys doing over at Arrowhead? Um, this thing just keeps getting more surreal. Um, but, but sitting in Coach Reid's office and looking out over the practice field, and uh, you know, this, is a, this is a team that's, I think all of football has great respect for, all fans do, uh, and uh, exciting to watch. And, and I know it, it's exciting to think about when they get healthy. This team has been bit. We were kind of commiserating about how you've got you to deal with injured players and figure out how to make things happen. You have to have the depth to have that, but that's, that's a lot that they're dealing with right now. But it's going to be fun to watch them put a strong finish on. But he couldn't have been, he couldn't have been greater. And uh, Rev Veach, too, just uh, welcomed us in. and. Let us, let us look around. It's a, it's a great facility over there. Well, I know that Yost had a good relationship with Andy Reid. You said in your press conference yesterday that he reached out to you real quickly. What exactly did Yost say to you, and what did you pick up from him during your last year here and there and through the minors and stuff? Yeah, I, I love watching coaches. Coaches of all sports, actually. A number of football coaches I just tried to read up on or if I get the opportunity to, to meet, like Steve Spagnola. I yes. uh, got a chance to see Spags again today. Just pick their brains about – it's people, and um, for Ned, it, it was an opportunity that I was able to be in uh, spring training with them, but I just tried, tried to keep a diff distance, and, and I, I think uh, Ned was very, we were very clear, hey, I just want to watch, I want to listen, I want to learn. Um, so I just kind of, from, from the outside, tried to take in as much as I could. Ned has a great reputation with his players of how he continues to just figure out ways to, to support them and how to to be consistent with them. And I think that's a, a great gift to be able to watch that from the inside. Watch how it's built from the up, from the upstairs, but also watch how it's operating in the clubhouse. One of the things I thought was very interesting about your press conference yesterday as well was the fact that you've hired a media consultant and an analytics consultant. Why did you decide to do that? Well, I, I think you can talk about wanting to get better or you actually do things to get better. Um, so yeah, I actually went back and started a, a master's program in organizational leadership because I just, I, what can I do? You know, our, our kids are at that age where we're not running to 15 soccer games on a on a Saturday. Uh, there's there's a little more time. When I was doing uh, as an advisor with the Royals, I was able to travel a little bit, but I had time to go jump in and first break down where are some things that I believe I can improve, and it's the answer is all things. Um, and then what are some specific things that I believe are weaknesses and or perceived weaknesses? Um, either way, there's things I know I can improve on, and and I, obviously I. Didn't want to just talk about it, so I started researching how could I and started bringing in some outside specialists and let them break me down, figure out how to get better. Well, another thing I took from the press conference yesterday, it was your very last question. You were a former catcher. You coached a, for, uh, a gold glover. How cool is it to have a guy like Salvador Perez on your squad, and what does he bring to a clubhouse that maybe you've never seen before? I think there's just uh, an obvious passion. You know, I haven't spent much time in the clubhouse, so I'm still trying to figure out these clubhouse dynamics. and. But I'll tell you, from watching across the field, um, he, he's magnetic and, and how he, he draws your eyes to him and how he plays the game, how he loves the game. Um, you could tell how much he cares about his teammates, how much he cares about winning. All, all of those, I think, play in towards a championship-style player. That, that's why he was such a big part of raising that big trophy. I think that's also something that becomes um, – part of your, your DNA, I think it becomes something that uh, you expect and it's hard not to have that. So I know this guy wants to get back in there and, and be a, a team that's consistently out there with an opportunity to win because he's a winning style player. A big talker around Kansas City is obviously pitching. I'm sure you know coming into this. What do you see in the talent in the minor league level and how quickly can you get those guys up to the major leagues? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a sensitive issue. Um, only the fact that th I think there's some special talent on the way. Right. Um, the timing of that, and, and two things. One's the timing, the two is the messaging. You don't want these guys feeling like they have to come in and resurrect anything. Right. Um, just do your, do your piece and trust people like Dayton Moore, uh, Scott Sharp, J.J. Percolo, who are, are kind of driving the machine of when they're ready. Yeah. When they show they're ready, uh, they'll be here, and not before then, and try not to wait. But let's be aggressive and figure it out. I, I think, uh, and I hope, uh, the Royals fans make their way out out to uh, surprise Arizona this, this spring because we plan on having some of these guys. And let them just jump in. I think the greatest way to get them really initiated into the major leagues is a, a major league spring training. And let them see the culture. Let them see the, the work ethic. And, and be shoulder to shoulder with some of these guys who've had 
a lot of individual success, but also experienced team success. Well, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you about Alex Gordon today. So the Royals declining the mutual option on him for 2020, but obviously still want to keep him around. What are your thoughts on him? My thoughts is that this is one of the best professionals in the game of baseball. And uh, I had an opportunity even uh, to talk to Alex briefly today and uh, just to congratulate him on another great season, but also to congratulate him and let him know that people that maybe aren't even watching Kansas City every single day, that aren't following the Royals that closely, they notice when there's, a, there's somebody that has that kind of presence, that kind of, uh, just, just the ambassador that he is to the game, the way he goes about his business. And uh, I know he's got decisions to make, and, um, and I just wanted to let him know from my perspective uh, how much deep respect I have for what he's been able to do. And, would love to just stay in conversation with how this goes forward. So what is your course of action to make this team a division contender again? Uh, get better, all of us, as I mentioned about myself. I, yeah. I, I just believe in, uh, in, my, in a mindset of growth and a mindset of how can I improve in everything I do. If I say something's important to me and I'm not, and I'm not conscientiously trying to pursue how to be better at it, then I, it's, it's all just lip service. And so we're, we're trying to get better with how we're using our analytics. Uh, we're trying to get better with how individually I use those and how we put a staff together that can develop. I think that's going to be a competitive edge in the game is, is develop just a little bit differently. Use the technology, use the data, present things in a way that these, these young players can understand them, find their weak spots and help them build on their strengths. I mean all those are pretty, pretty typical but I think it comes down to the commitment and the passion. I think it comes down to also having a support staff like is in this organization like I've never seen. The yeah. people, talented people that, that want to see this thing happen. For sure. Well, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate Thanks, it. Dan.